Happy payday, everyone. And welcome to tonight's episode of the Almost Christmas, sorry, <laughs> Almost Delicious. I am your host, Patrick. Jumping right into it, tonight's news begins with crime. As I'm sure many of you know, crime in Belize has been rising, and it doesn't seem as though it's going anywhere. The number of robberies, assaults, and panty burnings that have occurred <laughs> lately is frightening. Most recently, two men were held up at CD's gas station in Boroughboom, while three others proceeded to steal from the establishment. Here's what happened. A security officer was on duty, along with a young man who lives next door. When three armed men approached them, the men broke into the store and stole, get this, a few coins, some snacks, and some other small items. <laughs> After the theft of such valuable items, one of the thieves proceeded to force the security guard and neighbor into the back of a car and then drove them towards the Borough Boom Bridge, where he met up with his two accomplices. The driver of the second vehicle opened the doors and shot at the two innocent men, leaving them for them. So no, Belize has not been a safe haven lately. And so I urge everyone to take extra precautions to be safe. Make sure you lock your door when you stop for tacos at the street side. <laughs> Glue your hat onto your head. Staple your watch onto your wrist. <laughs> and hide your wallet where the sun don't shine. <laughs> oh, and whatever precautions you do decide to take, do not call the police. That's what another neighbor who saw the armed robbery happening tried to do 16 times without getting through even once. Not worse than when you try to call back your girlfriend after a heated lover's quarrel. <laughs> Not to worry though, ASP Alejandro Kowo has notified us that the police are aware of the problem as it has been happening for a couple of years now. In fact, you shouldn't be surprised if you call 911 from Belize City and reach the Orange Walk Station. <laughs> that being said, I'll tell you one more time. Be safe, ladies and gentlemen. The streets ain't your friend no more. And now, in some national news that has been developing, the Public Service Union, PSU, is crying foul after they have found out that the Belmapan City Council has sold the land they were leasing. But according to the Belmapan City Council, the PSU was not making payments. They claim that the PSU was also informed that the land would be made available for sale to them for $500,000, at which point the PSU counter offered just under $200,000. Since the counter offer was so low, it was rejected and the land was sold to someone else for $400,000. First of all, you can imagine if the PSU reps were shopping on Belize by and sell, they would be the same one with a dollar for every post to have $2,000 or best offer. <laughs> also, I could see why a public officer voted in those leaders. Their negotiation skills, insane. Imagine the Prime Minister telling them that the minimum wage can only be $3.25 and their leaders counter-offering that minimum wage be $78.50 without <laughs> income tax. <laughs> On a serious note though, we joined the PSU in fighting for a land they don't own, even though they weren't paying for it. <laughs> Remember viewers, if Guatemala invade Belize and we become squatters, we might end up in the same position as PSU. So let's attract some good karma in advance. <laughs> and now, in more union news, you would know that the Belize National Teachers Union held a rally last week to express dissatisfaction with the Minister of Education, Honorable Patrick Faber. Apparently, the teachers get big skaza yere so. Anyways, we are so happy to report that the teachers had a meeting with Minister Faber to discuss when to have a meeting with Minister Faber. 
where the agenda will see them setting up future meetings with Minister Faba to chart the way forward for meaningful meetings, <laughs> unless they decide that they refuse to meet with him again, of course. Here's how they put it in their own words. Just a meeting to chart the way forward in terms of how we are going to address the issues. The meetings today were just to decide on how we would move forward, so we have not gotten uh, into the details any uh, just yet. Well, we have agreed that we are going to be setting um, other meetings so that we could address each of them um, individually and come to agreement on them. We asked where this meeting to meet about meetings to discuss meetings will take place, and they advised that they will confirm whether PSU headquarters in Belmapan is still available. The minister has reportedly advised them to propose a backup venue, just in case that one becomes unavailable. <laughs> now, folks, in some political conspiracy for today, earlier this week, it was reported that Minister Boots Martinez's Port Loyola constituency office was burglarized. The watchman reported that he did not hear anything. However, it was discovered that several computers were stolen. Now, that is the news, but let me give you the shush, raw, unfiltered, unproven shush, <laughs> aka, please not sue me. Remember last week when Minister Booth said this? When there's an heir to the throne, the king don't leave until the king dies. Now, continue following me. Remember that a new standard bearer has been elected by UDP supporters to steer UDP to another win in the division? And that Boots did not support that candidate? Now, if you put one and one together, and grease it up with some good old crawfish shush, it kind of seemed that someone was simply trying to gain access to an office they believe they have the right to. Since they are the new standard bearer, <laughs> think about it from this angle. Remember, the watchman did not hear anything? Who could possibly have Superman-level powers to pull off a stunt like that. Who in Belize is a Superman? <laughs> anyway, like I say, this is a 100% conspiracious. Do not quote me. And on that note, folks, we go to a quick commercial break so I can talk to my attorneys and arrange bail in advance. <laughs> Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hello everyone, welcome back to the shush. I know I'm gonna get antsy, so I won't delay your big satisfaction. Let's hear what you big about today. <laughs> Ladies and gents, I am sure you could guess which government department this first bigness will be about. If you don't, let me give you three tips. You could get there 7 o'clock in the morning and I'll get out till 10 a.m. the next day. <laughs> Dead people get attended to faster than the living. And three, they make more mistakes than the person who built Lake Independence Boulevard. <laughs> yes, folks, vital statistics. This very irate person shared this complaint. Can someone please tell me what is wrong with Vital Statistics Office at the Western Regional Hospital and who I can go to for help? Since the 13th of July 2016, couple days after the birth of my daughter, I went in to register my child. Up to today, I cannot get my daughter birth paper because the young lady that works in the office refused to put my child information into the system and keep giving me the run around saying that she can't put it in the system because she had sent the files at the office in Belize City and they're the ones who is responsible to do that. <laughs> All right, so why so many government officers have to be like that, man? 
Some of the literally left here for suffer a week because it's not their job for staple and paper or open a mail or answer the phone. <laughs> when pay day, then are the one way should I have to wait five days or more before they get pay. I bet then they will be the first one to complain about delays. Anyway, <laughs> okay, here are the rest. Well, I already went in at that office and they told me that she is the one who has signed the registration papers, so she's supposed to have put it in the system in order for me to apply for the birth paper. Now, I am seriously sick and I'm tired of dealing with these illiterate people, I swear. <laughs> I've been back and forth traveling way down south to Belmapan, Belize City, trying my best to get my child stuff together and they refuse to just do their damn job. When will this stop, men? Vital statistics offices need to get their workers in check and stop wasting people's time and money that they work too damn hard for. You are playing with people's patience, time, money, and worse of all, my child documents. Miss, you know there's nothing you could say that has not been said before. <laughs> people reel up with vital statistics in English, Creole, Catchy, I even Roman numerals. <laughs> but nothing no fears me. They get featured for this show um tea time. I must even watch it during a lunch break. <laughs> I think only the Governor General could intervene and help. Trust me, when it comes to vital stats, are uh, 374,000 humans living in Belize, plus Lewis Wade, <laughs> Bex. Next up is something else that Belizeans always, always vex about. Food. Now, we don't know, like Domino's Pizza, where you could add a 12 slice pizza on your phone. And nine minutes later, a pizza with all 12 slices gets delivered to your door. <laughs> listen to this person's tragic experience and listen to the food establishment she chose to order from. This stuff in there, people who have food for sale on Belize Buy and Sell. <laughs> if you no know or not have good service, please stop advertise your food, because I am a pissed off customer. I call this place, no I call no name, but I call early so I could get my food on time. I call from 10.30 so as to get my food early. The damn food get here at 1.30, and I still have to pay for delivery fee. This is the same reason Belizeans can't stay in business because they're unreliable. They also lose a customer. One of my good friends would have said, this is the loan grass. <laughs> any, any, anybody who had a food off a of Belize by myself, they beg for disappointment. <laughs> From the time the food gets posted as one fried chicken for sale, nine out of 10 conditioning, like new, willing to trade, $5 or best offer. You shouldn't expect it to be nice, sanitary, and worse that it will be delivered on time. Now, I know a hungry woman is an angry woman, so you deserve to be begs. Before we could even move on to another popular category of begsness, I have one more food begsness to share. This Facebook user posted this. Belize. Please do better with your lemon pepper wings. They are just too extremely hot that I can't even eat them. Can you check your Belmopan branch on how to make them with less pepper? Oh, you meant pepper, pepper. Well, I guess I learned something new today. I may always assume that lemon pepper wings it's supposed to be spicy. I guess the pepper in lemon, pepper, silent. <laughs> Seriously though, being hungry, there's nothing to play with. You order your food, wait a good 20 minutes, spend your money, salivate, and then your lemon, pepper, wings, pepper you. <laughs> I would be begs too. And now, we have a very thoughtful citizen who expressed their vexedness online. This is what was posted. Good morning. There's a lot that is situated at the corner of Barnet and Haines Street. 
As you can see in the photo, the trees are the length to the electric wires. This lot is neglected by its owner for close to 15 years. I had lived in that area for more than five years and never see anyone clean that place other than myself. Belize City Council have laws in place to deal with lots like these and nothing is being done. So I would like someone to tag this post to a friend or someone who can do something about this lot or any other lots in the city that is neglected. I encourage people to take pictures of lots in your area and post it up so the proper authority can deal with the owners. Thanks for being a very concerned and proactive citizen. I just want to warn you though, if a property abandoned for over 10 years and people start post it online, that'll be Christmas gift for squatters. <laughs> as soon as we put up abandoned lots, you want to see strangers show up to claim their rightful squatting rights. <laughs> then you, me, the government, and the rightful owner will be begs. <laughs> and now, we end with a submission that was sent to the Shush Hotline. Before I continue, please know that viewers' attention is advised. This Shush is a little bit distasteful and literally too. This person said, Well, today I beg no <laughs> Every time I go to the University of Belize, some of the buildings always smell a s***, <laughs> man. It's no joke to sit down there. One hour, 15 minutes, sometime longer, they smell s***. <laughs> they need to do some <laughs> about that. The pipe from the damn septic let go all last in, and no joke, man. When you come out of class, you have to smell your clothes to see if that scent no go with you. Come on, man. <laughs> they need to do some <laughs> about that. Because we can't focus when we head the hurt you and you want to vomit. <laughs> wow. Unless that class the feces 101 or forensic <laughs> poopology, that university truly need to look into that. Imagine people they save up their money or rally hard to get a scholarship. Then catch our bus to broke down about two times before we reach campus. <laughs> Just so they could sit down in a long, boring class I uh, inhale hot sh**. <laughs> this one is wrong. Thanks for submitting your bexness. You no need for ever second guess the fact that you deserve to be bex. I still can't believe that one. <laughs> Anyways, viewers, I hope you enjoyed all this tasty bexness that I served up today. Remember, if you have bexness that's bothering you, let it out. Send your bexness to our shush hotline via WhatsApp at 636 or send a message to our Facebook page, Colorblind Multimedia. We're now going for a very short commercial break and I will be checking the shush hotline. So send your bexness now. Buenas noches, mis amigos. Bienvenido a la news de Internacionales. Welcome to the Foreign News. I am your host, Patrice Dandana. <laughs> Folks, a team of scientists in South Africa has discovered some very interesting things you could do with waste. Mm -hmm. They have discovered that human urine could be used to construct bricks which could then be used for home construction. <laughs> I wonder if I should have tried to test that out for myself. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I guess just like Queen Street and Raccoon Street Police Station, South Africa will have some peace house about the country. <laughs> I really and truly can imagine which scientist may they in a which bathroom <laughs> when they come up with that idea, that for them urine could be used to build house. Imagine what them house would have made if they take doo-doo for it. <laughs> Next up, 
I have a story on natural justice coming out of Texas. A man reported to police that his house was burglarized. The man here glass broke, so he went to make his checks around his house. That is when he discovered that a window was broken. The man also reported that he saw traces of blood and then a pool of blood. Right after, he caught the burglar lying on the ground dead. <laughs> Apparently, the burglar's hand got slashed when he broke in through the window and then he bled to death. Folks, this is a classic case of natural selection. And that's all I have for say about that. <laughs> and in another case of burglary gone bad, law enforcement authorities in Florida arrested a man who was suspected of burglarizing a home. He wasn't found dead like the other one. He wasn't even found on the property or on camera. Here how they find out the man broke in our house. The homeowners came home and discovered their house ransacked. The back door may left open, several valuables may gone missing, and they could find a cigarette burning next to a cup of coffee. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the man broke in the house, fixed up a whole mug of coffee, <laughs> and smoked two packs of cigarettes, <laughs> leaving behind evidence. Well, we don't know that then the police are foreign sophisticated. So, they used DNA and DVD samples and they were able to pinpoint the very fancy criminal. <laughs> so, for all of the criminals watching, I hope one of the watch and learn some tips. One, not jump through people's window. You want to cut your hand and did. <laughs> Two, not the mix coffee in a people's house. You want to get catch? And three, how about you just stop commit crime? How about that? <laughs> you know what I'm about that one, eh? Anyway, folks, in my final foreign news for today, I go beyond just foreign. I go in galactic. Several reliable pilots have reported seeing what they can only describe as UFOs. Unidentified, frightening alien objects. <laughs> a pilot in Ireland reported seeing an object near the plane moving extremely fast. Another pilot in the US reported seeing a very bright light and the object had come up along the left side of the aircraft before it rapidly veered up to the north. In my humble scientific experiment, <laughs> there is only one logical <laughs> hypothesis. Aliens are space, they try to take advantage of early Black Friday sales at JCPenney. Think about it. Now it's mid-November, when then a cheap alien show up, <coughs> or just before Valentine's. So if you all don't know folks, we think that Earthlings are the only living beings in the universe, just know that we have company outside the ozone layers. And that they love this skunk just like we. <laughs> Speaking of Black Friday, today is a payday. So, make I go try and see if Textile Palace have any seal for white cloth. I truly need to throw some new reef. <laughs> Anyways, as you know what I say, TMI. So, until next time, viewers, <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Mr. Patrice Dandara. <laughs> and viewers, that's our show for today. Remember, shush should not count as defamation. I am genuinely appealing for the people I have talked about to not sue me. I mean no harm. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if you want to keep up with all things shushy, follow us on social media at Colorblind Multimedia. I'll leave you now with an internet clip of the week. <laughs> Until next week, good night. <laughs>